Hello everyone and welcome to our video in our series of qualitative method SPC or statistical process control uh, this is the second video in the series the first one we did the X bar and R chart today we're going to look at the C chart so I already prepared the data that we have and this is the formula for the C chart which is the easiest of all control charts that we looked at <coughs> sorry so we have the data over here for 24 days or 24 samples we have the attempts or the number of non-conforming item and so on for the c-bar we're going to calculate the c-bar the ucl and lcl and as you can see we don't need the statistical process control table a3 or d2 or d3 or d4 or any of these values all we need is to calculate c bar which is the average of all these items here okay so that's the average that's c bar the upper control limit i'm going to do it first which is basically c bar plus three times the square root of c bar and this is the upper control limit and you can see the colors here are gone similar to the x bar and r i already set the conditional formatting to show me if there is any value greater than c bar uh, so greater than the ucl let's look at the LCL remember for the control chart for the C chart if the LCL is less than zero if it's negative we take it as zero so I can simply do the same which is C bar minus three times the square root of C bar and you will see that it's negative minus 1.16564 or I can modify this you use the if function to make this become zero if it's negative so I'm going to do that I'm going to erase this and here I'm going to type if the if function which returns what the if function checks for a condition if it's true it returns one value if it's false it returns another value so what I'm saying here is if e1 minus r times square root of e1 which is this formula over here if it's negative you can see here less than zero then return zero if it's false return the actual value e1 minus 3 square root of e1 Okay, so this is the formula. Once I put the equal sign at the top, at the beginning, it becomes the actual equation. And now you can see that it will display zero because the value is negative. Same as we did with the X bar in R chart, I will highlight all of these values and I will let Excel determine if there is a value greater than so I'm going to go to rules as I showed you the, in the first video. This is the rule I set up. I will show you how to set them up. So I'm going to click on a new rule. Format only cell that contains. Contains what? Cell value. I want it greater than the upper control limit. So I'm going to choose the upper control limit. What I'm saying here is Excel if the value in any of these cells is greater than the upper control limit then display certain things make the font let's say red and fill it with yellow so it's highlighted and I can see that I have value greater than the upper control limit you can change the border you can do whatever formatting you want the minute you click OK see this will be now the new rule cell value greater than e2 make it in this format but because i already have it i'm just gonna 
or raise it okay you can change the rule later on if you don't like this color you want it to be the other way around then you can come over here click on format let's say change the font to yellow here and the fill to red so now they are the opposite of each other I'm going to click OK to show you how this will work if I come over here and let's say I'll put it just 11 see right away it detects that there is a value greater than the upper control limit and it shows it to me especially if I have big table I don't have to look for the values right so for the lower control limit it's the same way let's keep this at 11 and let me put the lower control limit let's say 4 see it right away detects that I have two values less than 4 so they are beyond the lower control limit and one value greater than 11 which means it's above the upper control limit so this conditional formatting helps me find the answers I'm looking for okay so of course depending on the problem this not could be not a big deal because remember the C chart is for let's say number of defects in the product or number of uh, then conforming items so if it's less than the lower control limit that still could be a good thing right like I have an item that has less than three defects so it's not a big deal but on the contrary it's a better than having more defects in the item but this is how we set it up using Excel and you can see that Excel gives me everything and it solved the whole problem for me which I don't have to do any calculation and I don't have to look for the points beyond the control limits thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel and look for more videos on SPS control